Welcome to our weekly Forex forecast, and this is for a trading for the week of Ju July 1st to the 5th, 2019. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, especially in the current volatile conditions that we have. So please make sure you manage your risk and, um, um, and are aware of that. So next, or first thing, we will start off as usual with our calendar here, economic calendar. So coming up today, we do have some data out of Japan, as well as manufacturing PMI numbers out of China. So with the Chinese data here, it will usually have an impact on Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar, as they are uh, both Australia and New Zealand are big exporters to China. So it will be it will have an impact on those two currencies on Monday here. Actually, before we get into that, um, another thing to keep in mind is that oh, on Saturday, yesterday, we had um, we uh, there was the G20 summit where uh, President Trump and uh, President of China, they met. So as you're aware, U.S. and China have been involved in this trade wars. And last we heard they were at a stalemate. Um, however, out of the, uh, the um, talks here, um, what the U.S. has agreed to do is not put additional tariffs on China, and also uh, they are going to start the talks once again. Um, and, um, and also the, um, so those are the two main ones, and also they'll be able to sell technology to that Chinese company. So those are the main points there. But the biggest thing is that this actually um, gives that U.S. and China time to talk again and maybe come to an agreement. So overall, this will be positive for the equity markets. Now, however, a lot of that expectation was already built into the market. So when the market opens, we may see some gap ups. Uh, so in this case, the risk um, currencies, euro and uh, British pound, will likely you know, um, benefit from that as well as the equity markets. However, um, and actually Australia and New Zealand because they are partners with China. So all of those will do well commodities as well. However, because it's, it's been priced in, we may see a decline after, uh, maybe later in the week. So really nothing has been resolved, but overall it does create market optimism that they are likely to talk again. Um, plus with the Fed uh, likely to still cut rates because they haven't reached an um, agreement, this will be overall positive for the equity market. So just keep that in mind. But like anything, um, I would look out for that pullback after that initial move to the upside uh, because that tends to happen when we get such a news. Okay, so going back to um, our upcoming news here, we have PMI numbers here out of the Eurozone. PMI numbers are important because they are um, leading indicators for retail sales and GDP numbers. So this will be important here. And then we also have uh, manufacturing PMI numbers uh, from UK. So it will have positive numbers, will have an impact or a positive impact on British pound, and that can go up. Uh, we have OPEC meetings. Um, going on. So last comments that I looked at out of the OPEC were that they were going to cut production and that is positive for the price of oil. So we could see oil uptick, uptick as a result of that. And then of course we have uh, PMI numbers out of the U.S. Now the U.S. numbers have been coming out negative and um, they are continuing to come out negative. So the more negative numbers or data that we see out of U.S., the higher the chances that Fed will cut rates next month in or this month now in July. So if we continue to see the negative numbers, basically it will be bad for the U.S. but it will U.S. dollar, but it will be good for the equity markets because it will make Fed likely to cut rates. And then on Tuesday, we have um, the cash rate and RBA statement from Australia. So it looks like we are, uh, market is looking for a Reserve Bank of Australia to cut rates. So let's see what happens with that. They have already cut rate once 
and this will be the second rate cut in the last few months. So this was in May when they cut um, the rate. <clears throat> sorry actually yeah sorry june is when they cut the rate so um so let's see if they actually do that if they do cut the rates uh we could see australian dollar drop because interest rate cut is negative for the currency but right now we also have this u.s china scenario going on which is positive for australian dollar so just keep that in mind but overall interest rate cuts are negative for the currency and then going um, into further into the day here, we do have RBA Governor Lau speaking. Um, he was dovish last time, and this is why the market is expecting a rate cut. Um, so this is why the market is expecting a rate cut. Um, so if he continues to be dovish, basically we could see Australian dollar drop on that. And then we have building approvals for Australia, Overall, I think the cash rate and the um, statement will have a bigger impact than the building approvals at this, um, at this point. On Wednesday, we have more PMI numbers here uh, for both Euro, uh, Eurozone as well as UK. And then we also have uh, MPC members speaking. So we have heard a lot of... Uh, Oops, my apologies here. We have had a lot of, um, actually, sorry, one second. Um, I just need to close some windows out here. Okay, sorry about that. The comments keep popping up. Okay. Um, and then we have trade balance numbers here for Canada. Oh, for the MPC members here. So we saw, we heard a lot of FOMC members speak and, <coughs> excuse me, all the Fed members were, for the most part, kind of dovish and they were giving this, um, uh, creating the sentiment for the market um, to turn dovish and that now falls in line with Fed cutting rates. So they're basically trying to warn the markets so uh, the central bankers tend to do that. So if we start seeing MPC members talking about interest rate cuts or anything like that, or expressing concerns about the state of the economy, we could then expect Bank of, um, a Bank of England to sort of follow the same type of easing monetary policy path. So this will be important to keep an eye on the comments that come out of these speeches. Okay, then Canada. We have trade balance numbers coming up for Canada. Canadian numbers have actually been quite robust lately. And as a result of that, we have seen Canadian dollar go up. And if the numbers continue in that direction, we are likely to see Canadian dollar uh, strengthen more, which means our dollar CAD is likely to drop in that case. Um, and then we also have our not ISM non-manufacturing PMI numbers out of the U.S. These are also very important numbers because uh, U.S. is a very service-based economy. So these numbers, like I said, are precursors for retail sales. Uh, so will have an impact on the U.S. dollar. Uh, and retail sales numbers here out of Australia. Um, again, a positive number will have a positive impact, but a negative number could actually um, have a worse impact because of the interest rate cut there as well. On Thursday here, so we do have a U.S. holiday, um, July 4th. So uh, going into the weekend, a lot of times uh, traders will take uh, Thursday and Friday off. And um, that could actually cause low liquidity conditions. And we, on Friday, we have non-farm um, or non-farm payroll numbers coming up here. So because of low liquidity conditions and with, uh, um, with this being an extra long weekend, we could see a great or larger moves than we would normally expect. Overall, though, non-farm payroll is a very volatile uh, data point that comes out. It's a volatile event. So just keep an eye out for that as we can see a higher than um, normal volatility during this time. And we also have uh, Canadian employment numbers 
So again, it will have an impact on Canadian dollar. And if you're trading dollar CAD, both of them have data coming out. So please be careful trading dollar CAD during this time. All right, so that's our um, news coming up. So let's move on to the charts now. So with our charts here, we see that price has gone up um, last week. It went into uh, 1.1420-ish level, slightly below that. And this is where we are. So to this week, we have a doji. This is not a very, um, not a very solid candle close for the weekly here. So going back to our daily, we see that price hasn't done anything for the last several days. It's just traded sideways. Now with, um, um, with our um, upcoming week here, this one, it's interesting because we have a couple of things that could happen. One, it's into resistance. So it could do one of these and come back down. So that's one scenario. However, we also have this sort of a flag formation forming here. Price has been holding above this previous support resistance level. So we could see this move to the upside. That's what we have to be careful about. So at this, at this point, I would say um, we just need to watch which direction price wants to move in. So I would keep an eye on the high here around 1.1420 level if price stays below this level. So I, I'm looking for a retest. I'm looking for price to go up again to this level, retest this level. If it holds below, then we're looking for price to come back and this move here could get filled. On the other hand though, should price break above this level and, and hold above, so if price starts to hold above here, in that case, it's likely to go higher because um, price, is not, price is not likely to come back down in that case. It's already holding above this resistance level and it could uh, just continue higher. So overall here, um, my bias is neutral and I will wait to see where the price breaks to. Higher, if it goes higher, then I'm looking for price to get to the next level here. If it break, breaks above this 1420, target would be 1.1570 level. And if it stays below, then I'm looking for it to come back down into 1.1170. So uh, bias is neutral for Euro dollar. Pound dollar here, this one has gone up. Um, over the last few days. So looking at the daily here, sorry, looking at the weekly here, we see that the price went higher and then dropped here. It's still trading in this range. We were looking for a retest of this 1.2800 level and it did not didn't quite get to that level. Did get, It got close here into this previous support resistance level right into here, into 1.2780. So now it's still in that range. So the bias is, um, is, is still at this point range bound. What I would look for in this case would be a potential retest of the high. And if it stays below this number at 1.2780, chances are price is likely to drop again. So from a weekly perspective here, we have a very, very small candle close, which means we have to be careful. It looks like it's rejecting the high of the range, which means the price is likely to come to the bottom of the range. If for some reason it breaks through the high of the range, then it could go to the other side. And in that case, we could see the price go all the way into 1.30 level. But as long as it stays below 1.2780 or 1.2800, I will look for price to drop here towards the bottom of the range at 1.2520. So for now, my bias is to the downside within the range. But again, should it break um, out, uh, out of the range here, I will look for it to go higher. So bias for now is range bound to the downside. Aussie dollar here, this has been very, very strong. We saw price um, go up. <clears throat> and largely it was because of the positive sentiment created by the US-China 
talks here. So at this point, a bias is bullish here. Now, with the interest rate cut, should they cut the interest rate, that will turn things around here, and we're likely to see um, Aussie dollar drop. So what I would look for here would be a bit of a pullback and then move higher into 0 0.7070, and then interest rate cut, and we get a drop. So that's what I'm looking for here. Slight move to the upside into 0 0.7070, and then a drop from there for Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar, this one has also been very strong. And right now we have a big bullish candle close here. So in this case, looking for price to go higher as well. And also keep in mind, there will be some readjustments now that the G20 summit is over. So in this case, I would look for a bit of a pullback here. And if it holds above 0 0.6680, it's likely to push higher. And the next target is 0 0.6780. So uh, New Zealand dollar is bullish um, at this point. Dollar CAD here, this one has had a good run because Canadian dollar, as I said, the numbers have been coming out quite positive. US dollar has been weak and overall, this makes Canadian dollar uh, or dollar CAD drop. So in this case, a bias is bearish. We could get a bit of a pullback here, uh, potentially into 3150, and then looking for a further drop. First target would be the bottom here, 1.3070, looking for a retest of this level. And then um, we have to look for a break to the downside because that's a major support resistance. And should it break, then we are looking at 3020 and um, 29. 80 here. So bias is bearish for dollar CAD. Euro pound here, this one has also had trouble here. What we saw is that price went higher, uh, but it's still struggling with the high here. So in this case, bias is bearish and looking for price to basically retest the high and then come back down and drop. So as long as it stays below 0 0.8980, I'm looking for it to come back down. 8900 will be the first target. And then second target here, 8880 um, level. So uh, bearish bias for Euro pound. Euro Swiss franc here, this one is looking um, neutral here. We had a nice bearish candle close, but the price currently is neutral. So with this one, it could go in either direction here. What I would look for is a retest of the low. So looking for price to do one of these. And if it doesn't break through, then we're looking for a reversal. So retest of 1.1060. And if it holds above, looking for it to go back up. In that case, the first target is 1.1150. Second one would be 1.1220. So bias here is neutral. But like I said, we'll have to pay attention to the support there. Pound Swiss franc. This one hasn't really done a whole lot here as well. It's been trading sideways. Right now, there is some bearishness in this candle. But let's go take a look at the daily here again. So overall, though, daily has been making lower highs. So there is that uh, a bit of a push to the downside. So there is weight to the downside, but it doesn't look very solid. It is consolidating sideways at the moment. So in order for it to drop, we have to see a break below our support. So we need to see a drop below 1.2320. So first, I'm looking for price to drop into 1.2350, sorry, 1.2350. If it holds above that level, then I'm looking for it to go back into the range. So currently, it's range bound, and this is kind of what I would look for. But if it breaks through here, then we could see a drop further. In that case, the first target would be 1.2280 and then 1.2220. So there's a slight bearish bias with this one, but I would be very careful of 1.2350. Like I said, if it doesn't drop below that, it's going back into the range.
Dollar Swiss franc here. This one has not done a whole lot. It's also neutral at the moment. It came into our support. We were looking for it to drop last week. It did that. Uh, same thing with Euro Swiss, Swiss franc and pound Swiss franc. It did that, but now it's an indecision candle. We have pins on each side, small candle body. This is our indecision candle. So we have to see what price does at this point. Uh, again, looking for a retest. If it holds above uh, the 0 0.9700, then I would look for it to go back higher and just kind of do one of these. So right now, bias is neutral for this. If price breaks above, um, above this level here, then I would look for the next level at 0 0.9880. And if price breaks below the, the support here, then I'm looking for 0 0.9580. So this week, there were, a lot of, um, there were a lot of crosses that were just sitting sideways. They were, everybody was waiting for the weekend um, to see how the trade talks go between US and China. So there was a lot of stuff that was just basically uh, did not go anywhere. And this is what we are seeing. It was just a back and forth giving us a neutral market condition. But now that the meeting has happened, we are likely to see more of those moves this week. Pound yen here, this one has also been trading in a range, but it has been pushing up here. So over the last two weeks, price has traded in this range, but see we have two pins in the bottom and that suggests that price could move higher. So I would look for, so the bias is bullish here. 138.30 is the target to the upside for pound yen. And if it gets beyond that, 139.80 is the second target. Euro yen here, this one has also pushed higher. Um, last time we were looking for a bullish move, so we did get that. And now looking for price to move up higher. And the target here is 123.50. So bullish bias here for euro yen as well. Dollar yen, this one has also pushed forward here. We have, um, we have a bullish candle close, so looking for price to go higher. So all this uh, positive sentiment um, towards the US-China talks, it has really put pressure on the um, risk averse assets, so safe haven assets like Japanese yen, Swiss franc, gold, all of these things. And now that we have some a way of moving forward, our US and China has reached an agreement to at least move forward with the trade talks, that's positive. And as a result, we could see these safe haven assets drop a bit more. So keep that in mind. So as a result of that, yen crosses are likely to be bullish. So with this one, looking for a move into 0 0.108.80. So bullish bias here for dollar yen. Aussie yen has been a very strong here as well. We see that price went all the way into um, all the way into 75.80 level here, or 75, yeah, 75.80 level. Now, next target is 76.40. Now, with Aussie here, it's interesting because we do have that central bank statement coming up, and if they cut rates, this could be negative for Aussie dollar. Now what we have to look at is how it reacts at 76.40. If it goes into that level and doesn't go through, then it's likely to go um, into the range here and become range bound. So we could see price just move back and forth. However, if it breaks through, so let's say all the other yen crosses are bullish, this one can also break out of this um, this little range it's been trading in, and then this is what I would look for. So right now, bias is bullish. First target, 76.40. Second target, 77.50. Uh, but if for some reason it doesn't break 76.40, it could turn around and become range bound. New Zealand yen, this has been very, very strong, um, especially keeping in mind the talks here. So this looks bullish. So our next target here, so bias is bullish, and our next target here is 
73.50. So looking for a move like that. So a bit of a pullback and then a further move to the upside. So bias is bullish for New Zealand yen. CAD yen here. Um, this one is uh, also looking bullish. We could get a pullback into 82.00 or into 81.80 level here. The first target we are very close to, 82.70. This one could go higher here. Now we have to be careful that it, met, it breaks above this 82.60 level. If it doesn't, then chances are this becomes range bound here as well. But for now, bias is bullish here, and I'm looking for it to go higher. So this is the move I'm expecting. Uh, first target, 82.60. Second target, 83.50. So bullish bias here for CAD yen. Pound New Zealand has, has had a nice bearish move here, and now looking for price to draw further bias is bearish here and the target will be 1.8680 1. level so bias is bearish for pound new zealand so this is the type of move i would look for a bit of a pullback potentially into um, 0.9100 or maybe even lower into 1.90 1.9050 and then a move lower so bearish bias for pound new zealand here euro new zealand this has been awfully bearish as well this week so this is where we are in terms of the target our next target is 1.6850 and then looking for it to move further again so a bit of a pullback and then a drop is what I'm looking for. So first target, 1.6850. Second target, 1.6700. So bearish bias here for Euro New Zealand as well. Euro CAD here, this one has also dropped. We are into support right now, so watch out for that. So this is the support resistance coming all the way from here. Uh, bias is bearish. Now we could get a bit, bit of a pullback potentially into 1.4950 ish level. And then I will look for a further drop here. So something like this. Target will be 1.4800. So bearish bias here for EuroCAD. Pound CAD, this one has also been bearish here. We have seen price drop. So our bias is still bearish here and looking for price to drop further here. So in this case, we have pullback and then a drop like that. So bearish bias, first target is 1.6520, second target 1.6350. So bearish bias for pound CAD. Euro Aussie here, this is looking bearish here. We have a nice bearish candle close. So looking for price to move down further. And in terms of our target, oh, I did all of them. I was wondering why it's taking me too long. Okay, so looking for a pullback here, a 1.6250 and then 1.60. Uh, 1.6050 will be the target here. So bias is bearish and might as well do this one here as well. Usually I don't do this in our weekly forecast. I only do it for the daily, but I've been up for a while today. So, okay, uh, but let's continue on here. So this one is also bearish. And first target is zero is 1.7980. And below this here, we are looking at 1.7880. So this one is also looking bearish. We could get a bit of a pullback here into 1.8160 uh, like that, and then drop, so bias is bearish. 
All right, finally, let's get into our commodities. We'll start off with the, our gold. Gold here hasn't done a whole lot. It's been sideways. We have a neutral bias here. So if we see that the yen crosses are going up, equity markets are going up, gold is likely to drop. So, but for now, bias is neutral. And again, we have to see where it goes. So if we see price break the high, I would look for the next target. Um, sorry, not gold here, silver, 15.85. And if it breaks the low here, then the next target is 14.80. Uh, so right now, this is neutral, and we have to see which way it breaks for us to look for a continuation move in that direction. Gold here, gold, as we can see, has just gone sideways this entire week. It did go up, but it's, it dropped from there. So last week, we were looking for a, uh, for a move up. We got that, but then it has pulled back from our second target there. So in this case, I would look for a potential retest of the high, but I think this one could drop here. So like I said, if the yen crosses start going higher, um, our gold is likely to drop because uh, all the safe haven assets are likely to drop then. So for now here, I would say bias is bearish. I would look for a pullback into 1424 potentially. First target is 1398. And then we can see a drop potentially into 1375. So bearish bias for gold. Oil here, oil has been interesting. We did see a move higher. We were looking for price to go test the high here. It did that. But now we see this big, uh, big pin on the top. So in this case, it could drop from here, but do keep, in, uh, keep our ears and eyes out open to see what kind of comments come out of OPEC because that will make a difference. So right now, this one is also neutral. It's got pins on both sides, so it can go in any direction. Uh, so I would be careful with this one here as well. If it does break up uh, to the upside um, above this high here, next target we're looking at is 60.80, but it could go into 61.85 here. And if it breaks through the low here, next target is 54.91. So neutral bias for oil as well. Copper, copper is also, it hasn't done a whole lot. So in this case, um, I will look for a retest of the high again. If price holds below 2.72, we could see it come back into the range. So for now, um, I am looking for a retest of the high. And then depending on if the price stays below this, looking for it to come back down uh, towards the bottom of the range, towards 2.60. If it breaks through the high, then 2.80 will be the target for copper. Bitcoin looking quite bullish here. So uh, bias is still to the upside with this one. So it did go into this previous level here. So last, last week we were bullish on this one. So still remaining bullish here and it could go higher. So I would look for it to go higher. Next target is 14,500. Now with this one, um, watch out for how price reacts to the high here. So this is where it could struggle. So for now, I will look for price to go higher into 13,800. If it doesn't break above, it could, it could just get stuck here for a while before it continues further. But overall, right now I am bullish on Bitcoin. Our next target is 14,500. All right, so equities here. Equities uh, with our uh, positive uh, sort of meetings that US and China have had, we could see positive response from the equity markets. But do keep in mind, one, nothing concrete has happened, but just because they're willing to talk, it just does still create positive sentiment. So we could see the price go higher here. So for now, a bias is bullish for S&P 500, and the target will be 3,000 here for S&P 500. So bullish bias here for that. NASDAQ here is also looking bullish, 
and target here would be 7850 level so bullish bias for that dax here also looking bullish um, our next target is 12450 and then looking for it to go higher into 12650 so bullish bias for dax FTSE here hasn't really done a whole lot, but it's holding this support resistance level. It hasn't dropped below this. So this is the level it's holding, which gives it a bias to the upside as well. Target here will be 75.25 for FTSE. And then Nikkei here also looking bullish. Next target will be uh, 21650. Now one Caution, uh, one caution that I would suggest here is that um, the markets may have priced everything in. So we did see that big move to the upside, anticipating the positive outcome of the US-China meetings. And when that happens, um, it's like they say, buy the rumor, sell the news. So we could see some of that spelling of the news happen, which means we could see some moves in the opposite direction. So just be careful about that. But other than that, that's what we've got. And last thing here, if you would um, like to join me to the, do this sort of analysis on a daily basis, we look at all the pairs that we looked at today. Usually in the weekly analysis, I don't go into the crosses. Uh, I just usually look at the majors, but we kind of went uh, did the whole gamut today. So if you're interested in joining me for this kind of daily analysis every day and setting uh, the targets, um, I would invite you to join me in the trade vault. In this service, you will get the live daily analysis with me, just like we're doing right now. You will also get the daily market forecast spreadsheet. So if you do not want to sit through the analysis, you just want at a glance information of what's going on in the market. In the spreadsheet, you will see market direction, the pullback levels, which are potential entry levels, and of course, the profit targets for over 24 pairs, Bitcoin commodities and indices. So everything that we looked at uh, today. And then you also will be able to join the private Facebook group where um, you can ask your questions or of course, and I will provide put my comments in there to provide live market commentary as we go. And you will have access to me to ask all kinds of questions. All right, so in order to join this, you can go to this address here. It will be in the link in the, in the YouTube description as well, if you catch this on YouTube. So it's bit.ly forward slash trade vault. All right, so that's it. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the evening and all for all my Canadian fellow Canadians, um, wishing you a happy Canada Day and enjoy your long weekend. And for my friends in the US, it will be next weekend for you. So hopefully leading into that, you'll have a wonderful week ahead. Okay, bye for now.